God is also faithful to those who don't have anything or any concern for him and his justice. Earlier in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, discussing the persecution the church is undergoing, Paul said, all this is evidence that God's judgment is right, and as a result you will be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you. And the phrase I left off is then give relief to you who are troubled. Yeah, grace is unfair. But the unfairness of grace is not to the 12-hour worker. It's to the 11th-hour worker. And ultimately, grace is unfair to the farmer. Now think about it for just a second. What kind of businessman is going to stay in business very long by paying out all-day pay to people who only give him an hour's work? Eventually, the farmer will be the one standing down with the group of guys every day waiting for someone to take him out so he can eat. This is a picture of grace. This is what Paul says in Galatians, what we've been studying. If you want to live by the law, you will get exactly what the law asks of you. But if you come to the grace and the freedom in Christ, it will be there above and beyond. Look back up at Matthew 18. Jesus' direct comments to Peter. 19, I'm sorry. We shouldn't have turned a page. Just look up at the page at 19. After he tells them they'll be allowed to sit on 12 thrones, judge the 12 tribes of Israel, Jesus says, And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. At first, I wanted to think that was a comparison between Peter and us. I thought that's saying, Peter, you'll get this, but everybody else will get a hundred times more to put Peter in his place. But the comparison's not there. Jesus says it this way. If someone will come and do the work in my kingdom, whatever they've sacrificed for it, I will pay them back a hundred times. Anybody know what the percentage of that is right off the top of your head? 10,000%. Now let me ask you right now, if Wall Street tomorrow were to announce that every dollar you invested, you would receive back $100 and 10,000%, how many of you would change the American economy immediately by selling anything you could and put it in the stock market? And Jesus says, if you come after me, I will give you back. 10,000%. God is just, but God is also merciful and gracious. Which leads us to the point of the sermon where we have one more thing to do. If nothing else, we'll have to ask the question, so what? So what? So what will you tell people I said this morning? So what will you think of whether it was a good sermon so what did you write down as your conversation? So what did you take away? Or will we ask the deeper so what question? So what does this message mean for us? Well, first of all, I think what it means to those of us who wish to be the landowner in the story, I'd encourage you to read Matthew 21, verses 33 through 46, where Jesus tells a parable, again, of a landowner and his fields where the servants think they'll just take it by force without concern of following the king and be reminded that the truth of this story is we get to work in the field not because we've earned it but because we were called and chosen for it. Our own righteousness leaves us as these day laborers who are in need of someone to meet our needs and the one who has met our need is Jesus Christ. Which secondly leads us to this. What of us have already responded to God's offer? Consider these words written by Martin Lloyd-Jones. Grace is the Christian offer, the Christian possibility. Our whole trouble as Christians is surely this, that we fail to realize it. We're ever reducing the gospel, making something small out of it, something that we do, our practice of religion, the tragedy is that we think of our own selves and our busyness and our own activity 
instead of realizing that there is the wonderful possibility of receiving Christ's fullness and more and more of it. Or as the King James says in John 1.16, grace for, or grace upon grace that springs up into everlasting life, John 10.10. 10. And this failure, it seems to me, is the greatest tragedy of all. Instead of trusting God's grace, relying on God's grace, and serving out of God's grace, we get caught in the idea that what we do demands of God that he pay us our fair grace. And the reality is that's the mentality of the 12-hour worker. And you'll get exactly what you deserve for what you put in and nothing more. The one who says at the end, just come on and I'll take care of you. And we say that I'll go with you is the one who Jesus says, you're going to get rewarded in ways you never imagined. How would this change the way we give of our time and our treasures and our talents while we're working in the field? If we began to understand it's not just about eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth with God. How would we rest more confidently in the promise that we're serving the one that when asked to give us daily bread is, like us, is likely to give us an actual three-course or seven-course meal. How would this change the way that as Rachel comes and sings this morning, and we ask the questions in the light of God's grace, how may we be challenged much more to be motivated to give back to God's kingdom? Rachel's going to come and sing as our invitation song this morning, the song Thank You by Ray Bolts. I want to encourage the Christian this morning that you may need to change the words when you sing them. Instead of this being a word of invitation to serve the kingdom, maybe you have to start by singing it this way. Thank you for giving to me, Lord. Because of what you have given me, I am a life that is changed. Maybe we need to start with gratitude. Maybe if we're already grateful for what God has done, then we need to sing along with her the same words that we hope to hear of us as we think of those who have come before us and done their work in the fields of God and say, thank you for giving to the Lord because of what you've done. We are a life that has changed. Maybe a time to be thankful and grateful for the people who have already influenced your life. It may be a question of, is there anyone who would ever tell me this when I go to heaven? If, however, you have never heard the message of Jesus Christ, I would encourage you this morning to make this the day that you say, thank you, Lord. Come to understand the gift of the landowner is gracious. And make this the day that your life is changed.